Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and get on with this. I'm tired of messing around with this microphone, trying to make it sound perfect and this and that, because people will be like, oh, you're, you need to change your microphone, you need this and that, blah, blah, blah. But you know, it sounded better on the last one, doesn't sound as good on this one. If um, my audio doesn't work for you, you can send me another professional level microphone, okay? So <laughs> let's, um, let's just go from there. So, starting out with the actual um, with the actual Photoshop files is what we're going to do. What we're looking at right here is the line art. And let me zoom this in. There you go. So we can see a little bit more what's going on there. This is the actual line art, which, um, which, which I thought came out pretty good. I can turn on the blue line. So you can see that um, down here. Not bad, pretty good. I'm gonna go through faster on these tabs because we, we kind of have, or what's it look like? I think we have like six tabs to go through. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go fast, try to get through these um, um, much faster for you guys. So, there's line art. There's the rubber, which would be like the window seals. I did add some thickness because I, I really like to have like thicker contour lines, thinner interior lines. These are all of the blacks that are in the design. And you can see here, let me do one of these just to select those, I'll make a new layer, and let's say make them, I don't know, red. So you can actually see them. So this layer represents everything that's solid black in the actual inking, which is cool. Um, these are the the motion lines, what I got, motion lines in the tires, and I got some grill bits. I can show you how I did this grill, or, or how I tend to do grills, if anybody is interested. Um, you know, just shoot me a, I don't know, just comment on this video, and then maybe I'll look at, uh, make another video and show you how I do that. Those are the grill blacks, which actually were a different color in the final rendering. We'll get to that. Nothing right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here's the actual tread on the, on the tires. And once again, I can show you how I do that. If you want to see it, just comment. And if I get enough comments, then, then I'll go ahead and do that. But if, Nobody's really interested. I'm, I'm not going to waste my time. So here is the driver. Which you can see here, it's the driver and the Tiki's actually. Let me open up this folder. I'll turn those two off. So you can see the driver, um, the driver here. And you notice he's doing like the the, the hang loose sign right here with his left hand and his steering wheels on the right hand. Well, um, after talking with the client, that kind of changed. So, um, here he is with his, um, with his left hand up doing hang loose, the right hand on the steering wheel, but they wanted his left hand on the steering wheel and his right hand to be holding that very specific, um, shifter that we talked about in the last video so i had to do another drawing um what was cool is that since i rendered the vehicle by itself i could easily just do another rendering of a guy like like dude right here and then i put in like the the windshield the roof line and some of those other things which would help me align it to the actual truck so I could just go ahead and replace the driver without having to redraw the, the entire truck. So let's see what we got here. Um, you'll see more of that in just a bit. I'll, I'll definitely show it to you. 
here are the trees. And I think, no, actually I didn't. There, there, there are three individual ones. I, I thought I flipped this one to make this one over here. But, you know, there, there are three individual. These are just the sketches. And here is the line art over those guys. Once again, using the pen tool, the brush tool, and stuff like that in Photoshop, I'm able to go ahead and just ink those. I made sure that I closed every shape because then it would allow me to use the magic wand tool. Let me see right here. Is it in here? I don't know where it's at. Oh, it's, it's thinking about it. There it goes. So I could then, after I ink these, put them on their layer in the main file. Then I can click in an area like this. See that? And let me make a new layer. I'll put it underneath here. Um, red is good. I'll expand the selection by a couple of pixels and fill that red. So then I can put a base color in there. So that's kind of cool. So moving right along. One, two, three, four. Wow, we're already on tab five. This is the this is the, the, the tiki sketches. And as you can see, you know, I I did look at some reference just to kind of get an idea, but I want it to be something very, very specific to me, something that I hadn't necessarily seen before. So um, I don't think anyway. So I looked at some reference, did my own thing, and kind of um, did some sketches on the actual um, tiki's. Love the smoke. Then what I did was here's the inking of the guy on the left. Once again, this is using um, the pen tool, but then also, you know, kind of freehanding brushes and stuff in here to do the inking. And I, you know, I, I stroked the paths when I was using a pen tool to kind of give me this kind of um, tapered look and this kind of flow. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I got a video on it. You can go look it up. And here's the the other guy. Probably should have made his nostrils black, but I'm okay with that. And here you can see it. This is just the inking on a um, with this kind of um, taupe kind of background. Sometimes, sometimes it helps to ink on a different colored background other than white. White is very very stark, but sometimes. If you just want to ink on, say, a, let's do a, <coughs> a, a bluish gray right here, like a slate gray. It kind of helps you to see more. That wasn't a good example. But here, let's look at this one right here. It kind of helps you to see more as you're actually doing your, your inking and everything like that without the starkness of the white paper. So sometimes I'll do that. So what I did at this point was I took these guys. I took the inking of the trees. My updated driver right here. And you can see once again, I kind of closed these shapes with a red line because I knew I would take those out after I actually got him into the vehicle. That, that's another little trick, so you might want to do that. So, the the tiki's the trees, the guy, and like we had over here, let me take the driver out of here, and the actual truck. Those were the main pieces that I needed to put together. So I put together another file, and it was like, I don't know, um, 13 by 15, 14 by 16, something like that, um, 300 DPI, and put the pieces into the file. And then I started to put 
everything together, kind of like a puzzle, right? So now we will go over, and here is the actual file that I used to composite this. I'm going to show it to you on white, but I think when I actually um, built it, I, I think I used another color. I, I, I tend to change background colors a lot. So here is the line art of the truck. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see some stuff. You can see my grill and some of the other pieces that I put together just to kind of um, get everything set. I am not a everything has to be perfect kind of person. I, I think that's ridiculous. I think sometimes if it feels good, it is good. You hear me? So let's go. Oh, um, should I start on the bottom half? Let's let's start on the let's start on the bottom half or yeah and I'll I'll start on the bottom and just work my way up. No, actually I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. Um, I'm going to do top down from the line art layer, and then I'll go and I'll do top up for everything that's above the line art layer. How's that? So. I'm going to turn on headlights, as you can see right there. This is the color that I painted in the headlights. There's a smoke. Let me come down here. Now we'll stay up here. This layer right here, you see these little arrows that are here on the layers? That means that they are... Um, clipping path so everything that is underneath this layer with those little arrows only applies to that layer so I can turn these guys on which is great so now you're seeing some um, this is the base tone layer right here which is great so I can then if I wanted to, I could like lock this layer and let's say we wanted this to be an orange truck, orange-ish truck. There we go. That's kind of orange. Yeah. Mm, whatever. Let's say it's orange. Then I can make this truck orange and then every layer that is above it only applies to this layer right here which is um, which is fantastic so then that means that I can adjust any of these tones and just have them apply automatically in the last video I said this was like flat shading but actually let me turn this back to green um, this method is called cell shading which I believe references back to old cartoons and stuff like that where they did um, animated cells. Instead of shading with full blended, um, uh, full blended areas and everything like that, they would just do the shading in flat colors and shapes on the actual animated cells, which I believe were on acetate or something like that. I don't know. But um, you can only imagine how long it would have taken if you had to do blended shading on, say, 24 cells for every second to create an animation. So they would just um, do a more simple level of shading like this, which you could do from cell to cell to cell. So anyhow, we, we can talk about that later. Um, what I got here. Oh, there's my little interior colors right there. There's my grills, light, kind of chrome, which um, I, I wanted to do something that was more like a warm gray kind of thing as opposed to a cool gray, um, just because I thought it would um, flow much better. I didn't want 
that you know, I didn't want hard chrome or anything like that. These are the surfboards. You can see I got my light brown, dark brown in there. You got here's my rims and stuff. Just a little bit, you know, a little bit of blue, a little bit of gray. That's cool. Here's some more rim work. This is what I showed you in the last video. How I came in here, you know, put this little shape in there, kind of put this color there. There's a little bit of darks right there, a little bit of, you know, sometimes a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do everything. Sometimes just indicating or indicating or hinting that something is happening is a very cool thing. What do we got here? Oh, there's the the bumper bottom. Here's the bumper base. You see how that sets up over there? And I think, let me see. Now that's on the bumper over. See this layer right here? So that's the one that's over the bumper on the bottom part right there. I filled it with the good color, but the layer said to multiply. So that's going to make it darker which is um it's pretty sneaky it's pretty cool here is the tire base which is probably just a gray let's take a look and see what that looks like yeah that, that's that's just um that's just a light gray right there once again i didn't have to do a whole lot here because i was doing simple cell shading as opposed to full-blown rendering these are the colors for the underside of the rims you see right in here let's see point point got those bad boys in there um this is an interesting layer right here um and i normally do this on every drawing that i do this is what i would call the silhouette so um kind of call it the the silo but the silhouette so i can click on this layer or control click on this layer and I can get a selection of the entire silhouette of the vehicle or the boot or whatever whatever it is I'm working on this is important because normally when you're working with say a transparent background like so you want to have whites in certain areas or you want to have a certain color in certain areas that just represents where your vehicle or your whatever is and here let me here i'll make this blue so that you can see it i'm doing all backspace all of this is my blue that represents everything that's in the vehicle here let me move this up here so that we can see it and then i'll jump back down there hold on we're almost done people hang on you can see see this is the silhouette area so i can always cut out the vehicle from anything else that that i put in there so that that's pretty cool let me throw that away go down here i'm trying to go fast hang on um What's next? Oh, trees and tiki's. This is all in a separate folder that I have right here. Let me open that up so you can see that. Right tiki, there's the shading that's on the right tiki. See that? Left tiki. Here, here's all the here's all the stuff. There's all the the base tones. Um, everything for all of them. The reason that they are in a separate folder is um, because I wanted them to be in a separate folder. So, yay. So, let me, I gotta change this back to white. Hold on. There we go. Um, what do we got here? This is the sign. I'll show you that. Here's the actual sign, how it was all rendered out and everything, which is cool. That's just my name. You don't need to see that. <coughs> this right, <coughs> excuse me. 
sorry. <clears throat> this right here is the actual, um, I created a shadow based off of the silhouette layer that I just wanted to put behind the vehicle and just kind of um, help to give it some depth and push it out. I'll, I'll show it to you on a white background. See that little shadow stuff right there? Just kind of pushes everything out. I thought that was cool, so I wanted that. This is a um, circle, or like an oval shape that I put in because I wanted to contain elements. I didn't want things necessarily spilling out. I wanted everything to be contained within the overall shape, so I did that. Then I added a kind of bluish feel, um, fill to that circle, which once again, I could come in here and do a control U, image adjust, hue saturation, and I could actually change that color to any color that I wanted just by using this slider and, you know, going crazy. Um, I settled on the blue because it kind of felt like water, like kind of the water that I had in there before that I really didn't want, but still it gave kind of like a, a C kind of feel. I thought that was cool. Oh, okay. This is the Mr. Gasket logo, which was the major sponsor for this. I wanted to also create a version of it that was green. So that's what these two layers are right here. So I could show them green, I could show them their, their actual logo colors, but then I could also pull the green from the truck into the logo, and, and I thought that was cool. And here's all the logos. These are, were all the, the sponsors, the Excel Performance Group, Excel themselves, Mallory, yada, 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 whoever they are. <laughs> and then, let me go, oh here, let me put my name on there. Boop. And we'll do the, the portions that were above the line art and everything from the, let's go from the logo up. Number one is the driver. As you can see here, they did request that instead, instead of him being like this, they wanted him to be another way. They wanted his right hand on the shifter and his left hand on the wheel. This is after I already had this done. I was like, huh, okay, yeah. So, let me turn on the guy. You can see this is the line art right here. That was from this file, right? There he is. Then what I did was let me go back up here and find him again. The guy. There he is. There's a skin tone. Did his hair. These are the light bits and parts of him once again cell shading and these are the dark parts so what i did was i just fit that on there over once again this is over the actual full rending rendering of the vehicle which is which is kind of cool and let me turn this on yeah, that's good and that one right there, okay? <laughs> and now, oh, we gotta get his tattoo on there. Boink, because I had to do a different tattoo. So I just kind of found a tattoo that really worked and I just kind of um, fit it on there. Um, as opposed to going in and hand drawing this and doing that map, <clears throat> you know, whatever. You know, and people be like, oh, well, you didn't hand draw every piece of the tattoo, and then you did it. Well, you know what? Um, I'm only getting a certain amount of money, and I do not have a thousand hours to 
build a complete Polynesian tattoo in cartoon form. That works. I'm just saying. Here's the actual handle, which I use the actual photo of because once again, it was very specific. Here is some stroke on that handle. This is important right here because what this is, is these are the Will Wells. Can you see them in the tires? Tires look like that. Now they look like this. You always need to put in Will Wells shadows. Jerry Clo told me that all the time. You always have to have them because that's going to give your rim that, um, that depth that it needs. Then... This layer is called Tread Hots. It's pretty much the highlights on the treads. You see how the treads are just straight black right here? But then I created just some slight white highlights just above them because that also adds some depth and stuff to the treads. thought that was cool. Here's the glass. And what I can do on the glass is, once again... Um, I can do a control U, U saturation. So I can change the color of the glass to any color that I want. Let's say I want like green and purple. So it looks like a 1980s Kawasaki, whatever. I, I, I can actually do that. So that's the glass color. I did put in driver glass as well but this is not a layer that I necessarily used I, I would maybe turn, tone it way down see so you can still have the blues and stuff in there but I, I didn't use that on the uh, on the final the other thing that I added was the bling this is my bling layer see my little sparkles here boink 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 boink, boink. you know these are my little sparkles um, still using those brushes that were provided to me by Jerry Clo, amazing automotive illustrator, um, probably in the Car Art Hall of Fame, um, who befriended me many, many years ago, and um, I still share her things. I will also tell you, see my little upside down kind of oval shape right here? I call that my Jerry shape, and in many, if not all of my drawings, I always include my Jerry shape, and that's a that's a shout out to her. And then, oh, here I'm going to show you this real quick, and then I'm going to let you go. I'm going to add an adjustment layer. See this uh, little circle thing right here? I'm going to add a levels. There's levels, and I'm going to add a saturation, and I'm going to show you why here, hue saturation, in just a second. Um, let's change the color of our background. Let's say it was on navy, okay, instead of white. There, that's good. And I'm going to show you what these guys do. So here's a, um, let, let's do them one at a time. Let's do levels first. Here's a levels adjustment layer. I click on that. Here's my level stuff. Now I can take this end slider, push it in. Everything, every layer that is below this gets darker I can take the right star the yeah the right side push it in every low uh, every layer that's below this gets lighter or I can adjust it from the middle as well what this does is it helps add more just more depth more more oomph to your to your drawing throw that one away because i already have 
the levels that I like right there. Let me come down here and I'm going to change the background to like that tan color or something. There we go. Let's do that. And I'm going to click on saturation. Once again, hue saturation gives me the, the same thing. Anything that I adjust on this, on the master level, will apply to the entire um, to the entire drawing. So here, look, bam! I can I can just go crazy on the saturation if I if I want to. Um, I wouldn't want to do that because I'm not crazy. But I can also go through and adjust. You know, let's say just the just the the cyans in this entire thing. I want to change the saturation on those. Look at that. I can then adjust just those specific tones. And I've got, you know, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, blah, blah, blah. And if you um, really mess around with that, you can figure out um, how to really, really get um, detailed adjustments on those things. I will set the levels the way that I did on this particular piece. And here I will show you what those settings are right here. You know, crunch the blacks a little bit. I kind of left the whites alone, slid the mid range over just a little bit. And let's say that we put this on a gray shirt. Bam, here it is on a, on a gray shirt or a gray poster. Um, ultimately ended up being on white, but that is ultimately how it came down. And that was a deep dive into my Photoshop file. I know I went fast. I know I didn't cover every little thing specifically, but if that's something that you want to see, you guys need to let me know. And that's something that I will do in any case. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Lime Crush from, I don't know, whenever it was, but um, yeah, it was, it was a fun job. It was a cool gig. It was nice to have the actual vehicle at SEMA with the posters and, and all of that stuff. Um, and yeah, so you know what? Um, that's pretty good. Longer than I wanted it to be, but it is what it is, right? So um, holler at me, let me know what you guys want. Um, I'm Lim.